In this episode, we're going to be discussing one of the six factors of influence, scarcity. Before diving deeper into this subject, I wanted to give credit to where this information is coming from. Dr. Robert Caldini has written two books on this subject, Influence and Persuasion. What is scarcity? Well, simply put, people want more of the things that they can have less of. A fantastic example of this that was used by Dr. Robert Galdini in his book is when British Airways stopped flying Concorde twice daily to New York from London. Now, this flight didn't change. It wasn't going any faster. It, there wasn't anything special about it. They just decided because it was uneconomical, they were running it down and stopping those flights. And for the last month or so of those tickets being available, they were sold out as British Airways had created a scarcity deadline with that product. There are a number of ways that organizations and companies can create scarcity through deadlines. A little bit like the Concorde example, it can be a product that's being completely removed from the market, thus creating a scarcity deadline that people want to experience that item for a last time. However, a lot of organizations can also create false deadlines, and a great example of that could be a webinar or other online uh, selling techniques that are used and they give you a countdown clock or an email funnel and say that you've only got 24 hours or five days or whatever it is left to make this purchase and they'll send you a series of videos or emails or reminders to get you to purchase that item. However, a lot of these deadlines are just false made up deadlines from a pre-recorded webinar or an email funnel and it doesn't matter what time of year you would have clicked on that button to see the, the, the webinar you'll still get that deadline of the next 24 hours or next week. And that kind of technique for me is starting to get a little bit old and a little bit stale, but it is one to look out for. When it comes to effectively persuading other people, the scarcity principle can come in very handy. By letting the customer know that there is a deadline or letting the customer know that if they don't say yes to the proposition, they might lose out on the unique advantages or some unique free bonuses or something about that product that isn't going to be always around. Now, using the scarcity technique, a little bit like British Airways, cannot be always seen as something negative. However, I do personally think that the scarcity technique is used a little bit more on the dark side of influence and persuasion than some of the other six factors. For me, a lot of marketers and a lot of sellers, whether it's a car salesman, a realtor, whether it's a anybody selling it through a webinar, if they use a scarcity technique on you, like a realtor might tell you many other people are interested in this house and there's already offers down, a car salesman might give you a call back after you've looked, from a, looked at a car and say, oh, somebody else has come in and wants to put a deposit on this vehicle, but I wanted to give you a call first just to make sure you had the first swing at the bat. How do you know that's actually true? How do you know that that's actually what's happening right now? They're creating scarcity in your mindset to make you say yes to something. Not all these techniques are used by the dark side wielding wizards of marketing. However, my personal opinion, and not to repeat myself, is that if anybody's using scarcity on something that is a regularly purchased commodity or is something that is readily available online 24 seven, and they're using scarcity as part of a product launch technique, I would stay away from that. An ethical way to use the scarcity principle would be to offer your first 20 or so customers a free gift. This is creating a little bit of a deadline and just persuading some people to maybe come to your store earlier or to click yes first to that request when you send them an email. This isn't necessarily creating a false deadline and sending someone a bunch of email funnels to continually build up that sense of scarcity and keep telling people how much they're missing out on stuffing. Using small scarcity principles like the one I just mentioned about giving away free gifts to your first 5, 10, 15 or 20 customers is completely ethical because you're also linking in a little bit of reciprocity there. The people are coming to buy stuff from your store anyway and then you're giving them a free gift. If you want to check out the video that I did on reciprocity, you can check it out in the iCart above. I think I said check it out a couple times there. Over the next coming weeks, I will be completing the other four factors of influence. So if you want to check those out and come along on this journey, hit that subscribe button. Also, if this video doesn't get more than five likes in the first 20 views, I will be taking it down. I just completely made up a scarcity deadline there to persuade you to hit that like button for me. You don't have to, but it would be nice to see whether that trick worked. 
The fact that I told you it was a trick probably is going to backfire on me and not work out as well as I thought it was. But hey, I might as well try to use some of these factors of influence while trying to describe them to you to see whether you can pick up on what is good influence and what is bad influence. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you next time. And as always, make it a good one.